Good evening. Praise God. Praise God. This is Pastor Bernadine Wormley Daniels, and this is the Living Water live stream Bible study. Bless the Lord. It's Tuesday, and we are ready to once again break open the bread of life and drink some living water, praise God. Hello, Cindy, bless the Lord. Um, Prophet Cindy Williams Moore, praise God. Thank you for joining in. I was just thinking about you probably because I was looking at some of your artwork and thinking where I, where was I gonna hang it? Good evening, Loretta. Good evening, Trish, Shakaya. Um, over in Canada, good evening, Kathy. Good evening, Gwendolyn. Praise God. Good evening, Eva. Bless the Lord. Glad you guys are all joining in. Um, Kanisha. Good evening, Kanisha. Um, praise God. Kanisha is a part of my Pathways program. Good evening, Katrina. That's another Pathways program person. Praise God. Glad you guys are with me on tonight. Um, oh, let me turn that off. Um, oh, what was I going to tell you? The notes, you know, were on my page last week. <laughs> okay, so we are finishing that up. And uh, let me see if I can do something real creative, real quick, uh, while people are still coming in the room. Let me see if I can load a file up on my page again, just for those who didn't get it. Um, I can't find it fast enough. Um, Let's see, I have to multi, here we go. Whisp Whispers, worship and the end times. Let's copy the link. I'm gonna repost it. I'm gonna, I'm on my iMac, but I got my iPad right here. So I think I'm gonna use the iPad to resend the link. Um, here you go again. Okay, bam, share. Okay, praise God. All right, so I just did that. So if you are um, on here this week and you didn't get the notes last week, I just um, I just reposted the link on to my page. It'll send you to Dropbox and and then you can get the the notes out of there. Hello, Ruthie. Um, Cindy, yes, it is time to connect. Listen, my Aunt Mary is in the room, so we could stop playing games and get to the word. Praise God. My Aunt Mary and my cousin Mary are with us tonight. Praise God. So, so thankful for them. Um, good evening, Jill. All right, got my Pathways peeps checking in. Praise God. All right, guys, we're going to jump in real quick before we do. My Logos Book Club, bam, we are reading Whisper by Mark Batterson. And listen, where did August go? It's the 25th already, you know. It is the 25th of August. Um, so, peeps, that means you got like a week to finish reading this, if you're in the book club. If you are not, you should still get it and read it. This is so good. I, I can't emphasize to you enough how good this book is. And you know it's good when every single page, almost every sentence is marked. Whisper, how to hear the voice of God. Do yourself a favor and purchase it. If you um, attend Shekinah Church, um, maybe you should plan to have lunch with me after church on Sunday. We'll find some place to go eat 
and we will talk about the book. Those of you who are further away, um, maybe I'll post a Zoom link and we can come into the Zoom room. I can get about 100 people, uh, at least 100 people at a time in the room. So um, you'll see it on my Logos Book Club page and I'll post it on my own personal page, okay? But we the end of this month, so Sunday after church, I'll be preaching this Sunday, praise God, either join us in Ann Arbor or join the live stream. Um, Shekinah Church in Ann Arbor, and um, we're going to talk about this book. Okay, that's the book of the month, and then those of you who are in my Pathways, Pathways is a part of Soterios Ministries. It's our leadership training and development um, program. It's just an, an opportunity to connect with um, one another and for me to help to mentor and help people to hear what God is saying to them about their purpose and destiny and do whatever I can to get them, give them a little push onto the right path and to try to give them a little bit of, you know, my own personal experience and, you know, the, the, the highs and the lows, the good, the bad, the ugly, kind of let them in on, you know, just my own journey in ministry in ways that'll help them. We are reading from the John Maxwell Leadership Bible. Um, this is the third edition. I think it comes in the New King James and the NIV. This is the New King James that I have. We have just started in this. It is loaded with John Maxwell's phenomenal leadership principles and, con and concepts. What I love about him is he teaches from a Christian perspective. He's a business leader, but from a Christian perspective. So he goes into the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, the 21 indispensable qualities of a leader. And what he does is as we're reading the text, he'll pull key insights out and show you, here's this principle operating. Here's this, um, this weakness operating. Here's how you want to avoid that. Um, so if you um, joined that, that, that page, is called SMI for Soterios Ministries, Inc. Put in the initials SMI Pathways to Purpose. SMI Pathways to Purpose, if you want to be a part of that. And you need to start reading in Genesis um, uh, three, three chapters a day. We meet, um, we gather on Zoom right now um, by monthly or every, uh, every other week, okay? Um, when we get out of this crazy season, perhaps we will gather face to face. You know, we need to do that and connect. I'll be doing some retreats and workshops and seminars for my Pathway people. Um, so you need to get one of these and join us in the reading. You can message me if you want more information or go to the page and request to join the group. Okay. SMI Pathways to Purpose. Praise God. All right. Grab your Bible. And your notes, bam. Okay, and let's pray. And we are going to jump into the word. Praise God. Father, thank you. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace and for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this gathering. Um, thank you for um, technology that allows us to connect um, and break open the bread of life and sit at your feet as disciples of Christ and, you know, hear your voice and feed upon your word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you. Um, just the privilege that we have in this nation where we're in this season, we can gather freely. There are some places across this nation, like over in California, where they're trying to prohibit the gathering of the saints. But Lord, we, we are free and we can do this now. And so we ask you, even as you did in the genesis of things, to brood over the top of us in the birthing position and plant seeds of, of revelation and insight. Birth your purposes and your plans for us. Break the seals off of the word that we might hear your voice, that we might know you intimately. Lord, have your way. Think through my thoughts, speak through my words, be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. So 
We are talking about, hey, Gladys, we are talking about um, war, whispers, whispers, worship and the end times. And it was pretty good last week. Let me quickly review uh, what we uh, said on the last week. Let me quickly review. Um, I talked about how, um, oh, let me say this. If you miss the, the Bible study and you want to catch up um, and you can't find it on my page, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube page and it's probably under Dr. Bernardine Wormley Daniels. So just put in Bernardine Wormley Daniels um, and you can go to my YouTube channel and there are years worth of videos <laughs> there um, teaching. Um, and so usually what I do is after we go off the air, I download um, this study into my um, computer and then I upload it to YouTube with the closed captioning, particularly for my good friend, Brenda, who um, is deaf. And so she can watch the, the closed captions. OK. And so um, but it's there for you. You can turn the captions off if you if you don't need that. But the, the, the classes will be there. OK, they're on my YouTube page if you miss it. So you can always go back and make them up. Or if you are a pastor or a leader and you want to use them for like small group study, that type of thing, you know, just let me know. You can message me. I'll send you the notes, that type of thing. All right. So here we go. Um, I shared with you on last time how in recent months, the spirit of God has been uh, speaking to my heart about worship and sound. It's been surreal because, um, you know, uh, it just, it just feels, I've been thinking, Lord, is this for me? <laughs> you know, I'm having to reevaluate, you know, how I see myself. I mean, I love learning, you know, so I do have instruments all over my house. I've got transverse flutes. I've got Native American flutes. I have percussion instruments in my basement, a full acoustic set of drums. I took drum lessons years ago. I'm always taking classes, learning something new. I have several guitars, some that I bought, some that are very precious to me because they were gifts. Um, and I uh, just got a keyboard, you know, so I'm trying to do when I hear the spirit of the Lord say to me, talking to me about worship and sound. And at the same time, he's been stirring in my heart a hunger to understand um, the end of the age and the end times. And so some of you know, I'm working on a class on the end of the age. When I get it all together, you will be the first to know, okay? Praise God. And so um, we talked about um, um, while in prayer, and um, even in some of my dreams, I've heard the whispers of the Lord. He's just been tugging at my heart. And I shared with you um, some of those uh, whispers. Whisper one, we become like what we soak in. This was something that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, that climates can alter um, whatever it is that lives in it. Um, and so we talked about imagining how the climate and the atmosphere of heaven can shift things in the earth if we bring that into manifestation. Um, I talked to you about whisper number two, where the Lord began to uh, talk to me when I was practicing on my guitar about not just playing, but praying every chord. Let the chord be an expression of prayer. And that was so good. We, we talked about that in depth last time. But essentially, he said, if you learn to pray each chord, you will change how you see and hear music. Um, then I shared with you whisper number three. We talked about, um, you know, the Lord began to talk to me about crucifying flesh and that your flesh should not resonate louder in your soul than the voice of your spirit. That whole thing, whisper number four, um, where I had a vision of a hand extending to me this beautiful guitar. Uh, it's all very prophetic, you know. The Lord talked about releasing a new sound of worship. And it, and it's going to be a simple sound. It won't be this fully orchestrated, like, 10-voice, you know, praise band, you know, um, it's going to be a very simple sound of worship, the sound of a bride adoring her king. Um, 
um, a prayer set to music, like a simple keyboard by itself or a guitar uh, by itself, you know, that type of thing. It'll be a simple sound and yet it will capture um, the, the heart of God and the ear of heaven. It'll And the Lord began to talk to me about learning the chord transitions and the keys and how to flow from one sound to the next and how those keys, musical keys, will actually unlock as like a key for real, a door in the spirit realm to release the prophetic. And the Lord said, and you will prophesy. So between the time that, hey, Pastor Steve, that's my, my tribe down in Mississippi. Um, and so between the time that um, you saw me last, I have secured a teacher. I'm supposed to be meeting a teacher this Friday. She's a believer. She plays violin or string instruments. She told me I can play anything with string. <laughs> so said, okay. And I shared with her what the Lord has been saying to me. She said, I can teach you that. I can teach you how to, the chord trans, the modalities and how to flow from one key to the next. So I'm excited. I'm trying to be obedient to what I hear God saying. And then whisper number five, I was listening to um, the five-day prophetic worship intensive with uh, Rick Pino and um, Todd White. And I shared with you three key purposes for worship. We, we talked about how we worship, um, number one, because God is worthy of worship. We went into that in depth. We said worship brings us into agreement with God. We looked at how prayer brings us into agreement with what God says worship brings us into agreement with who God is. That was so good. That was a teaching. That was from Rick Pino. It was brilliant. I took notes and shared it with you guys. Um, and then the third key was he said, when we worship, we are literally enthroning God in a place. And we looked at that Psalm 22 and verse three talks about how God is enthroned on the praises of his people. OK, so when the king comes and sits down, he brings his kingdom with him. Now, think about that for a minute. OK, and um, uh uh, Pino, Rick Pino also talked about how worship and fear and anxiety and burdens cannot coexist. So when we're feeling certain things that are a contradiction to what God's word says about us or concerning us, then we just need to begin to worship because it enthrones God, shifts the atmosphere and causes those things to flee. Now that was worth tuning in again. That was worth the repeat because that'll help us to get through some stuff right there, okay? So, and then we, we begin to look at um, this teaching from Mike Bickle, who is the founder of the IHOP, the International House of Prayer, that has literally been in nonstop intercession and worship for decades. Talk about holy ground in Kansas City, Mike Bickle and the IHOP. So we began to study about worship and the end times. And it was interesting because that's what God has been speaking to me about, about worship and the end times. So we talked about Jesus' words in Matthew 24. And I'm going fast because this is all review. I need to work us back to where we left off, okay? So um, <clears throat> Matthew 24, Jesus' um, uh, last conversation, like discourse of teaching, with his disciples. We're going to go into this more in depth when I do my class on the end times. So we looked at how in the end of times, which is where we are now, there will be two worship movements colliding, okay? Um, the, the, the power of God will be displayed with, with, with glory and majesty over against the power of the enemy. You can look at the back of the book and I can tell you right now who's going to win. God will win, okay? But the book of Revelation tells us that in the end times, the enemy will begin to, this is, and I'm paraphrasing, but the enemy will begin to wreak havoc in the earth because he knows his time is short. And so that's why it just seems like everything is crazier than ever right now, the enemy wreaking havoc because every day his time is short. He, he loses another day every day, okay? And so the good news is that the end result of this conflict is that it will release the millennial kingdom of the Lord on the earth where Jesus will return for his 
thousand year reign and he will rule from Jerusalem. Okay. That's another class. And so we talked about how in this season that then the Lord is committed to raise up a prayer slash worship movement because they really are the same thing. Worship movement, prayer movement, they are two sides of the same coin, okay? And we looked at several passages of scripture. We talked about how worship is true warfare. Um, we're in an overall time of transition. We talked about how worship realigns the earth with the will of God in heaven. It's his tool of choice. Um, we said the prophetic end time church has to see worship as a priority instead of a warm up to the preaching. We went over Isaiah 55, Hebrews 4, John 17, John 1 and 1, Isaiah 40 and verse 8. And we have worked our way to the part of your notes that says great conflict at the end of the age. This section right here. This is where we are, right up there. Okay. So let's start right there. So um, all, bearing all those things that we've already studied in mind, there will be great conflict at the end of the age. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is raising up today, right now, the most powerful prayer movement the most powerful worship movement in history. And it'll be, I mean, people that are so soaked with the power and the presence and the glory of God that uh, somebody with a uh, an acoustic travel guitar can just begin to pray a chord and, and, and pray a song and the atmosphere will <laughs> shift, praise God. Listen, the Lord is going to usher in his kingdom in answer to the worship prayer movement because the worship, and remember the word in the, in the New Testament that is translated many times as worship, other times as prayer, is the word prosukomai in the Greek, prosukomai, and it literally means worshiping prayer, okay? Like I said, there are two sides of the same coin. And worship is about more than singing a song. Worship is a mindset. It's a, it's a posture in your soul. It's, it's your heart's attitude towards the Lord. So it's about more than music. It has to do with, with our, our, our understanding of who he is and who he is in us and who we are in him. And so, um, the, the worship movement is, is, is going to accelerate the worship prayer. And I'm using the terms interchangeably is going to accelerate in these times. And it's not something that begins in a vacuum. Okay. God knows exactly where he has been leading the church from the very beginning. Okay. God is not confused. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my pathways um, group and we were just doing an intro and I was, you know, just getting to know some of them and um, asking them, you know, what kind of things they wanted to dig into and and um, several people that you know have prophetic inclinations and really want to understand how to really press into into that and others that want to understand like the whole Hebraic um, mindset and and which you have to have if you want to understand Scripture. So I told them that I would. Um, teach them, I would do a class for them on um, like the Hebrew alphabet, how to read the, how to, how to, the, the basics, you know, of the Hebrew, the, learn, learn the alphabet so they can learn words, how to pronounce them, um, the Greek, that type of thing. And one of the things you'll find when you do that, because Hebrew is a three-dimensional language, and we, we've done some of that um, in, in, in our study here with Living Water, you'll find that the, there's the ancient paleographic meaning of the words. There's the pictographic meaning of the of the, each letter. There's a numeric meaning for each um, um, Hebrew letter so that when you go, even in the very first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
in the first word, in beginning, Bereshit in the Hebrew. When you when you look at that in the Hebrew and then you blow it up, looking at the pictures that each letter represents, you see that God knew the end at the beginning. <laughs> oh Lord, I don't even have time, but we're gonna study it. I'm gonna do this with my um my pathways peeps. Praise God. Listen. God, you find you gotta trust me on that. I God, the Lord knew the, the the end from the beginning and had had encoded in the Hebrew in picture and numbers and meaning, he had encoded that his son would come and be crucified. Listen, the Lord had fixed it before it got messed up. He is omniscient. What the devil did didn't take God by surprise. What Adam and Eve did did not take God by surprise, <laughs> okay? And so um, God is going to usher in that which he purposed in the very beginning. He's going to have his way because we looked at it last week, Isaiah 55 and verse 11, that the word of God does not return to him empty. So shall be my word that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And so in the last decades, before Jesus returns, um, this is Mike Bickle, he said, and I agree with him. He says, there will be a, he believes there will be a time of intense anointed, well, I felt the anointing on that before I could get it out. There will be a time of intense anointed global worship. Okay, a company of people, a grassroots movement in parks, people gathered in parks, you know, in homes, um, you know, home fellowships, in break rooms, on people's jobs, come on, you know, at places of business, in stadiums, in theaters, on street corners, a global anointed interceding, worshiping prayer movement that is going to cause the enthroning of the kingdom of God on earth, regardless of how dark it appears to get the, listen, glory will begin to shine. Isaiah, write this in your notes off on the side somewhere. Isaiah 60, what did he say? In Isaiah 60, he said, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He said, listen, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness, the people's butt the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. So there will be a grass roots movement, a revival, let's see my t-shirt, a revivalistic grass roots, <laughs> apostolic and prophetic soul stirring life, changing healing, delivering breakthrough radical grassroots movement it is coming and that worship will birth and usher in the lord's millennial kingdom with jesus himself seated on the throne using the keys of the kingdom to bind satan and call down the new jerusalem see um and and here again let me let me say this uh, before that actual millennial rule comes into manifestation, the Lord will be enthroned. How? We said it last week and we, we reviewed it today through the praises of his people. You know what? Just for fun. Oh, let's just give me a minute. Psalm 22. I'm, I'm curious now. I want to see what, which word there is translated as praise. Um, yet you are holy, enthroned on the Tehillah in the, you know, because there are different types of, you know, you, you know, Baruch, Tehillah, Shabak, 
you know, all these different types of, of, um, of, um, uh, of praise. But this particular word in this passage in Psalm 22, verse three, yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of the text says Israel will write your name in there. The people of God, God is enthroned on the praises of Bernardine. God is enthroned on the praises of my Aunt Mary. Just ask her children, they'll tell you. God or her grandchildren. God is enthroned on the praises of his people. Tehillah, that word in the Hebrew, Tehillah, is a hymn. It's when we begin to sing the song of the Lord. It's a, it's a praise song. It's adoration, Tehillah. It means adoration. It means thanksgiving. When you begin to sing a song of, of adoration and thanksgiving and praise, see, um, uh, that's Tehillah. When you begin to, to sing and declare the fame and the renown and the glory of God, that's Tehillah. <laughs> Come on. He comes in and sits down. And when, he's, when he is seated, he brings his kingdom with him. Okay. And so that worship is going to, to, to cause something to shift in the earth. Listen. And so using the keys of the kingdom, which uh, one of the, the key that we're, we're talking about is, is um, hearing the whispers of God and releasing that worship and releasing that sound, that sound that will bind the enemy and cause the, 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 the um, temporary and, and then ultimate enthroning of the Lord in the new Jerusalem. So look at Psalm 149, Psalm 149 in your Bible. Um, this, this tells us really what our right and our responsibility is. Look at it. It says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord, a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Wait, let me let me pull it up in the uh, let me pull it up and so I can see it in the Hebrew. A uh, praise the Lord. That's the Hallel. That's the Halal. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise. Praise the Lord. And then it says, sing to the Lord. That's a, a Hebrew word, sure. Um, sure. I might be pronouncing it wrong, sure. Um, uh, it, it, it has the idea of like a strolling minstrel, um, like singing as you're walking, you know, singing as you're driving down the road. <laughs> Come on guys. Come, you know, especially if you, if you're surrounded by crazy drivers or caught in traffic, just begin to hallel, halal, hallelujah. Give God the highest praise. Sing while you're rolling down the street or, or moving about or walking through your house. Sing a new song to the Lord. His praise, his praise. That's that word again, tehillah, his glory, his adoration in the assembly of the godly. That means that wherever you and I are, we bring a sound. Oh Come on. We bring a sound. We bring the sound of worship. We, we bring a sound of adoration. Even if we stand in there and it looks like we're not saying anything audibly, our very presence, the the our love for him releases a sound into the atmosphere that causes things around us to shift. You are more dangerous than you know. Look, and put your, listen, put your name in the text, verse two, let Bernardine or let, let the Living Water live stream Bible study be glad in their maker. Come on, y'all. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, with dancing. That's the word, mahol. It mean, it's a round. It's that, it's like, you know, getting in that circle kind of dance or in the hood, you know, it might be line dancing. You know how you get everybody together and you do that line dancing, only you flip the script and you're doing it as a celebration of who he is, making melody to him, making melody to him with the tambourine and the lyre. 
Um, that's the Hebrew word. That's another type of praise. That's the word zamar. Zamar. It, it's, it has the idea of striking with the fingers to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument to make music upon it. So that's what I am learning how to do on my keyboard, well, specifically um, on my guitar, zamar, dancing and making melody with him, with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds as you're going to, to bed at night. Let a praise and a thanksgiving and an adoration be in your heart for the Lord. Let the high praises of God be in your throat. Oh, let's look that up. In your throat, garon, garon. Uh, yeah, throat, neck, your throat or your neck is like a sepulcher, it's a picture of an open sepulcher. In other words, it's, it's almost like if you look at it like this is a passageway through which the sound is released. So it's saying, let the high praises of God be in that passageway so that when you open the sepulcher, instead of death coming forth, the praises of God comes out. Don't you love the, see, I love the languages. And if you're wondering what I'm looking at, in case you're, you are wondering, okay, here's my iPad, and I have an app, and that app has the text in the English and all the keywords highlighted, and if I tap that word, it brings up the Hebrew and lets me see it and gives me the definition, okay? And um, I can, um, if you want to know what app that is, oh, wait, let me see. For all of you ministry leaders, just and not just um, ministry leaders, but disciples. Come on, we have the technology. I have it in all my technology. I have it in my iPad. I've got it in my phone. And it is called, uh, it is the Olive Tree, Olive Tree Bible app. And then it has things you can purchase. And so, you know, the Olive Tree Bible app, I believe, might be free. But then I purchased Strong's Concordance. I have it in the New American Standard Bible. I have it in the King James. And I have it in the ESV. So whichever translation that I'm using, I have that particular um, resource open. And that's a little easier than carrying around a big old Strong's Concordance. You can just carry it digitally and it saves you a lot of time and it makes you appear very, very smart, praise God. Okay, when you get to know how to use it. All right, so where were we? So let the high praises of God be in their throat. That means when we open our mouth, the praises of God come out of the, the sepulcher, see? Like a, res like a resurrection when Jesus came out of the sepulcher. <laughs> Let Jesus come out again, you know. I'm coming. Okay, I'm sorry. I went somewhere. I went somewhere. I'm back. And a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the <clears throat> nations. The, the heathen. That's the, what that word actually can mean people. In other words, the high praises of God, the, in the, the power of God, the weapons of God are in us to, so that as we begin to praise, it executes vengeance on the peoples, on whatever it is, let me put it like this, on whatever is keeping them in bondage. Boy, I felt that. Our praise begins to execute vengeance upon the addiction and the sickness and, and, and the disease and that which is afflicting them as we begin to declare the praises of God. It, it wars, it, it wars against um, whatever it is that's holding them. Look at, look at the rest of the verse. It says, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. And here, in other words, here's what the Holy Spirit is saying. 
to bind their kings and with chains. This is talking about the principalities and powers, the, the rulers of this present darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, the kings and princes in the spirit realm, fallen entities that are binding the people and holding them in darkness and captivity. It binds their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Why do, why do we do that? We are doing that to execute on them the judgment that was written on the cross. When Jesus hung on the cross, the enemy was judged, sin and debauchery, rebellion, um, illness, sickness, disease, everything that separates us from God was judged and found guilty. And so we come to execute the vengeance. And then see, so what God, the Lord as our intercessor set up a meeting between heaven and us and sin was judged, but the enemy, because of Christ's intercession on the cross was cut off. So we come to enforce, we come to execute that judgment. Let me slow myself down, see, because look, the next word in Psalm 149 verse nine says, this is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. You know, so this is our honor to do this. We do it. The Lord did his part on the cross. Heaven slammed the gavel and you and I are the bailiffs. We're the ones who must now execute the judgment. We are the ones who represent, this is what we're teaching on Monday nights in, in prayer, and it is being live streamed. You can find it on Shekinah's, Shekinah's page. We're teaching on this from Dutch Sheets' book, Intercessory Prayer, which is phenomenal, okay? But Jesus did it, and he is sitting down. So now we have our part. We have to execute in the earth the judgment that he finished on the cross and that he sealed with his resurrection. And now as our high priest, he is sitting down waiting on us to put our foot on the enemy's neck. Okay, listen, come on guys, you've got work to do. We got to stop sitting around waiting on the Lord when the Lord is waiting on us. I've done my part. When are you going to do, when are you going to walk in the authority that I have given you? When are you going to shake it off, as my pastor used to say back in the day, and make the devil take it back? Look, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written, this is the honor for all his godly ones. And then the psalmist finishes it with hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In other words, in the Hebrew, hallelujah. Now that's good right there. Come on, people. It, we, we got stuff to do. This will be in answer to, to the desires of the worship movement. Movement, the king coming in fullness and power. He comes in answer to our desires. When, when we invite him in, he comes and sits down. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Man, don't you love the Holy Spirit? Just that quick, the Lord quickened this passage in my heart. It's in Revelations. I want to say Revelations 3, but let me make sure before I tell you. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no, that's not it. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, who can find it fast? It's the passage, the Lord just quickened this to me. It's the passage where Jesus says, uh, um, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Oh, there, I found it. Is it Re Revelations 3, thank you, Holy Spirit. 3 and verse um, 20. You know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. So he he's knocking and he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Okay. And so 
He's waiting on us to invite him in. Our worship, thank you, Jesus. Our worship and our adoration invites him in, welcomes him in. And again, what does he do? He brings his throne. And then when his throne is established, his kingdom is released. <laughs> okay, that's so good. So we desire what God desires to usher in the kingdom of heaven on earth in the full sense, in the fullness like we will see in the millennium. That is why Jesus told his disciples, this includes us, to pray. When you pray, say, Father in heaven, holy is your great name. Your kingdom come, decree it. Will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, Matthew 6, verses 9 and following. You know, listen, it's an apostolic and prophetic decree that the Lord taught his disciples, okay? Abba, holy is your great name. And then what, what aspect of him are, are you wanting to see released? Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, come, let your kingdom come with fullness and power, your will for healing and restoration be done. Let's decree it. Let's stop praying like, like wimps, like, like, like we don't know God, like, like, like he hasn't given us his word, like, like we have no authority, like we got to beg and plead when we are, we are huyas, sons and daughters of the king, we can boldly come to his throne of grace. Let's, let's begin to pray some dangerous prayers and, and release some powerful decrees. Somebody, somebody ought to say amen. I should be able to get, um, you know, one amen. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You know, come on. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Let's look at Daniel 7. That's just good to me. Daniel chapter 7. Turn there to verses, uh, Daniel 7, verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> Daniel 7. And this is Daniel having the vision of the four beasts. And, and um, he, then he begins to see the Ancient of Days. And in verse 13, look, he says, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him and to him, to the Lord, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages should serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is one that shall not be destroyed, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what CNN or MSNBC or NBC or CBS or, or Fox, Fox, regardless of what any of them report, his kingdom is an everlasting dominion, a kingdom that shall not be destroyed, period, regardless of what the enemy says and what it looks like, his kingdom is coming in fullness and power. And you and I have a part, we have a part in bringing that into manifestation. See, come on, you, you got a part, you know, come on, stand up, you know, stop, you know, hiding in, in, in the pew waiting on the Lord to come get you. <laughs> Stop waiting to, for him to come get you. And instead, come on, let's, let's, let's shift some things. Let's step on some necks. <laughs> let's step on, the, listen, let me tell you this real quick. I have to go up this bunny trail. Cause I shared this last night when we were looking at prayer and we were looking at how the passage of scripture 
where it talks about how the Lord led captivity captive, you know, and, and that whole thing. And, and, and I was sharing how that connects with um, ancient um, warfare when, um, for instance, um, oh, was it Joshua? Uh, yes, Joshua and the people, they defeat the five um, nations that came against the Gibeonites who wasn't supposed to be in covenant with them anyway. But, you know, they entered into it because they didn't ask God and they got in trouble. So Joshua and his army defeats the five kings that come against the, his covenant partners. And, you know, the kings run up, try to hide, but they pursue them. They find them. And so the tradition was that when a when a king and his kingdom has been defeated, that the end the, the, the winning king comes and they they line up all of the the generals and and the 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 princes and the kings of the defeated nation and they throw them onto their face face down and the winning king comes and he stands and he puts his foot on the neck of the king you know to show i i have kicked butt and taken names i am the victor okay and so that so you see joshua and the and the armies of israel coming and they get the kings and they line them up but joshua boy man i felt the anointing on that too what i'm getting ready to tell you joshua does something different instead of him putting his foot on the kings he calls some of his men and has them do it because they are partnering with him in the defeat and in the victory and so the lord does the same thing with us he is sitting down and he is waiting on us to execute the judgment on his behalf and put our feet on the enemy's neck so get up out of your pew get on your knees or in a posture of prayer and begin to war over your family over your children over your grandchildren for your job for your community for this nation are you going to sit back and watch this nation go to hell in a handbasket are we going to sit back and and are we going to vote in legislators who believe that the wholesale slaughter of unborn children is a constitutional right are we going to vote in legislators that believe that paul can marry fred and sally can marry sue and that it, that that people can you know um um take children and be intimate sexually with children and that it should be legalized that our borders should be oh come on people come on think think come on we, we you have power not only in your vote but in your praise all, all, all i'm saying is think about it you know you better think think about <laughs> what you trying to do to me think. okay okay i'm back I, okay i went somewhere in my head i'm back <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right, here we go. Let's look at Zechariah. You better think, think. Okay. Zechariah 2, verses 10 through 12. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. Come on. So here again, we sing and we rejoice. And he comes and he dwells in our midst. Isn't that good? Come on, that's good. Did you know that was in your Bible? Bless the name of our God. Wait one second. Wait just one itsy bitty little second. Let me make sure that I have it highlighted in my Bible. Here we go. I got to underline it. I don't know what you do with your Bible. But I, I write in mine. Look at that. Look what I found. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. I'll put my name in it. Sing and rejoice, Bernardine. For behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. 
and many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst and you shall know that the Lord of hosts, huh? I will dwell in your midst and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Come on, he dwells in our midst when we sing and rejoice. Look at Revelations. Turn over to the book of Revelation. Revelation 19 and verses 11 through 16. <clears throat> then we're going to jump down to verse 20. <clears throat> And then we're going to look at um, chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. Then I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire. And on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. That's what John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1 and verse 1, he's called by the, this name, the word of God. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword. That's the word of God. You, you, you know, um, uh, Paul in... Ephesians uh, talks about how the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So from his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will, he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has trampled out the vintage wrath, the grapes of wrath are sore. He's loosed <laughs> the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Come on, what church did you grow up in? Come on, guys. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's our God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And then let's look at. Uh, chapter 20, verses one through three. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon. See, he, you know, he's going to deal with the enemy. Come on. Um, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, in case you was wondering who that was, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Okay, well, that's an end times teaching. We're going to get back to that at another time. But the worship movement, what this worship and prayer movement is not just about what is to come. It's the church's first line of defense against the enemy's worship movement because there are people who serve the kingdom of darkness, see? And what people don't understand is there's no happy middle ground. You are either serving the Lord and worship him or you serve the enemy and you worship him. Your rejection of God is your acceptance of the enemy. There's no happy middle ground. You either are saved or you are lost. There is no middle ground. 
And worship is our first line of defense against um, persecution is how we get through, is how we're going to get through the days to come. Look, look at Acts chapter 16. Let's look at this. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. Oh, this is that story where Paul, um, Paul and Silas, <laughs> and they are on their way to the place of prayer. Here comes this girl. Listen, everybody in church is not operating under the Holy Ghost, okay? <laughs> I think I'm gonna have a sip of water after saying that. Listen, guys, <laughs> everybody that is in the church or that, you know, is in a, around you is not operating under the spirit of Christ. This slave girl, even though she seemed to be saying things that were affirmative towards Paul and Silas, she was operating under a different spirit. And that's why you need the Holy Ghost. So you can be discerning. People will be up sometimes, they're singing or preaching or doing whatever they're doing. And you'll just have a little check in your spirit, like what in the world? What is that? You know, people don't be in there by themselves, okay? This woman had a spirit of divination. That's um, Pythias or Python is where it's a spirit of Python. That's the type of demon that likes to smother you, like get a grip on you and just smother the life out of you. You, 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 you feel like you can't breathe, like life is coming in on you, smothering you, smothering your vision and sapping all of your strength. The spirit of divination, spirit of Python. And she was bringing her owners much gain through fortune telling. Now, look, you see this stuff on TV today. You know, I was looking at, um, and what's amazing to me is how many of the people that will have these folk on their programs are people who say they're believers, but they're bringing on psychic mediums. That's the spirit of divination, Python, okay? Oh, I, I'm picking up your dead uncle near you. The devil is a liar, okay? Okay, anyway, come on, let, let, let's keep going. So anyway, she was in the fortune telling, psychic reading, all that kind of stuff. There's a difference between psychic reading and divination and the prophetic, okay? Those are, those are completely different spirits that's operating. They both see, but they are different sources from which the information is coming, okay? Different sources, okay? And so she followed Paul and um, she was crying out, these men are the servants of the most high who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And she kept doing this and she was getting on Paul's nerves. Come on, that's what it says in verse 18. She was getting on Paul's nerve. He was annoyed, you know? So he turned to the spirit. Now notice who he spoke to. He knew there was a spirit operating through her. So he doesn't address her. He speaks to the spirit and he said, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And it came out. <laughs> come on. It came out. And so her ability then to divine, to do that, that, that psychic stuff that she was doing was gone. And the money that they were making off of it was gone. Listen, I prayed for you. I've shared this with you guys before years ago. This was back on the East Side in the old Exusia days. These people brought this young man to my church and they stood out because my church on the east side of Detroit was like 99.9% .9 black. And these were two white women with a young white male. And so they stood out, you know, we knew they were visiting immediately. And um, they stayed through the service. Somehow they had heard about our ministry. They heard that we had a healing team and prophetic team and that type of thing. And that people's lives were being touched and changed. So they brought this young man to see if we could help him. And they wanted me specifically to pray for him. And so service is over. And I'm, you know, I was on my way to my office to change, get out of my robe and everything. And I said, oh, sure, I'll, 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 we'll pray for him. And I was about to call a team in with me. 
And he said, no, 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 just you. Just, see, the enemy likes to isolate you. See, but what he didn't know was he thought it was just me, but I took the Holy Spirit and a couple of really big angels back in the sanctuary with me, okay? So we go in there and we're sitting in the front and I start talking to him. And this young man was, was uh, had a spirit of divination, witchcraft, python. He had been involved in satanic worship and all of that kind of stuff. And he was very, 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 very psychic. He said he couldn't keep a girlfriend because, you know, weird things always happen around him. And um, they had him seeing a psychiatrist. He said that his, his psychiatrist had actually refused to see him anymore because he started doing some of the psychic stuff on her and reading her and giving her words that were so unnerving because the spirit realm is real. Are you guys out there? Spirit realm is real. And so, you know, now the whole time that we're talking, I look like I'm listening, but inside I am saying, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying, I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm whispering, I'm releasing it. Listen, you don't have to be loud. If you have authority, you have authority, okay? Come on, we don't, we don't have to be so spooky spiritual all the time. If you and I have authority, we have authority, okay? So I'm sitting there and in my spirit, I am saying, I'm praying in other tongues. I am, I am pleading the blood of Jesus all over me. And so when, when, when finally, when I got, it, he was telling me about how he was out on a date with some girl and they like sitting in the park or whatever, doing that thing young people do. And the car is off and the radio kept coming on. Spooked the girl so bad that was the last date he had with her. All kind of bizarre, you know, supernatural things like that. And I'll never forget, he said to me, he said, normally I can read people. He said, but I, I can't do that in here. He said, I can't, I seem, I can't do that with you. He said, I just feel numb in here. And so I said to him, that's because this is holy ground. And I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. So it wouldn't work in, in the sanctuary. Are you guys out there? Listen, people, this thing is real. And what we're talking about is the end time worship prayer movement. And so I was worshiping and praying while he was sharing his story. And here's the thing that stands out to me that I'll never forget. Because in this text, it talks about how... Um, uh, the owners, like in verse 19, it says the owners saw that their hope of gain was gone. So, so they were angry with Paul and Silas. So this young man, I said to him, I said, listen, do you want to be free? You can be free from that spirit. Are you a Christian? He said, no, he wasn't a Christian. I said, would you like to receive in order? I need you to, in order for you to be free, I'm going to need you to receive Christ as Lord, because if we cast the spirit out and there's there, and don't put anything in in its place, you will be worse when it comes back with seven of his friends than you are right now. And this is what he said to me that I'll never forget. He said, if I receive Jesus, will I lose this power that I have? He was afraid that his hope of gain, what he had been doing with that psychic stuff, that the power would be gone and it was going to be gone. Okay. But the Holy Ghost was going to be in him. He would have been clothed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Spirit. Whew. Man, I, you know, let me just, I, I must have a sip. <laughs> Listen. That just causes you to pause, doesn't it? You know, come on. Choose the blessing or the curse, life or death. Choose. I said, young man, let me, let me pray for you. Do, are you willing to receive Christ as Lord? He said, yes. I don't know if he really meant it, but I prayed for him. He prayed with me. 
and ministered to him, never saw him again. So I have no idea what happened in his life. I pray one day I will see him in glory. Praise God. But I'll never forget that conversation because it reminds me of this passage. So they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them in the marketplace before the, the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrate, these men are Jews, they're disturbing the city. You know, they advocate customs that are not lawful. They, they were mad because they were gonna lose money, lose money. That's what you got going on in Hollywood. People selling their soul to the devil for fame and wealth. What Eternity is forever, beloved. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can you give in exchange for your soul? Have you guys seen that new music video by Beyonce? The one where the women are in those leotard things, they come together and then they start moving and it looks like a snake, some kind of um, Medusa thing coming to life and she's got those horns. Come on, people. What kind of music? Don't tell me that's creativity. That is demonic. Are you with, are, 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 you, are you listening? That is demonic. People selling their soul for wealth and for fame. That doesn't glorify God. That ain't got nothing to do with black being king. That is insulting to the Africans that I know. They find that stuff insulting. Okay, let's keep going. Come on, people, we gotta wake up and, and, and see from our seat in heavenly places. So these folk were mad because their practice, they were making money off of this woman with the spirit of Python. And so they, they attacked them, they gave orders to, to beat them. They tore their garments off of Paul and Silas, beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows on them. Now, listen, has life been, do you feel like that? Do you feel like life, your job, your family, your relationships, your church, wherever it is you are, has life, do you feel like you are being inflicted with many blows? What's been your response in the midst of the affliction, beloved? Come on, you and I gotta go high when they go low. We, we, we gotta do better. Here's what Paul and Silas did. They beat them, they afflicted them, and then they threw them into prison on top of that. And not just the prison. Look, look, verse 24, look, verse 24 says he put them in the inner prison. So he took, he put them in the prison, in the prison. He took them deep in. Have you, have you felt like the enemy has like thrown you deep, deep into the prison, in the prison? And you're like, Lord, where are you? What's going on? 20 to people have been saying, can we like go back and start 2020 over and like do it right? Or, you know, we in Jumanji level eight, can we get out of here? Can we get out of Jumanji? What are we doing wrong? Listen, has life been, come on people, it has been a crappy, I feel like I've been in Jumanji for like the last three or four years. <laughs> Come on, guys. But here, you know what I have discovered? You, here, listen, listen, write this down. You want to know what I have discovered while I'm on Jumanji level 36 or something like that? Here's what I have discovered that my worship is a weapon. <laughs> oh, that's just so good. My worship is a weapon. You don't believe me. Look at verse 24. He put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. They are afflicted. They are, you know, come on, disrespected, dishonored, mistreated. And, but right about midnight, when it is the darkest, when everybody has abandoned you, when folk don't believe in you, when people don't, you feel like God has a call on your life and the people around you are like, what? 
get out of here. You ain't call. You know, you can't preach. You can't pray. You can't sing. You ain't no prophet. You're not a teacher. You're not a pastor. You're not a, a this or you're not that. Sit yourself down. You're not qualified. You can't do that job. You'll never make a good mother. You'll never make a good father. Nobody wants you. Nobody loves you. Come on. Right out of midnight when, 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 when things were their worst, Paul and Silas were not murmuring and grumbling and moaning and groaning and whining and complaining. Look, come on, beloved. Look, you, what were they doing? What were they doing? Come on, Acts chapter 16. <laughs> Let's go there. What were they doing? Verse 25. I'm going to tell you what they were doing. They were praying. That is prosukomai in the Greek. That's what we've been talking about. They were singing a prayer and praying a song. Come on, prosukamai. Look, they were praying and singing hymns. Sing it. Wait, wait. Get off of there. Come on. They were praying, and this is the Greek word humneo. Humneo is where we get him. It's to sing the praise. So they were, they were praying a song. In other words, they said, come on, let's worship. Can you imagine? They're bleeding. They are beaten, bleeding, dragged into the dark, dank, rat infested. This ain't the, the Hilton or the, you know, or whatever the top of the line, you know, resort. They in a prison. Okay. How do you spell what? Prosukomai. You spell it P-R- O S P R O S E U C H O M A I prosukomai P R O S E U C H O M A I prosukomai Listen come on you got to get this it is a bad day in the natural and in spite of it in spite of it they say, come on, Paul, you remember that song? <clears throat> and they begin to sing the adoration and the praises of God. And look, look, the prisoners were listening to them. Listen, people are listening to the song your life sings. Are you with me? People are listening, whether you're singing a dirge the blues, nobody knows. The trouble I see. People are listening. Your children, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, they're listening to the song your life sings, whatever kind of song it is. Well, Paul and Silas were prosukomai. They began to, and here's the thing about prosukomai, that worship and adoration, that word is limited to God. You cannot prosukomai the devil. So if you worship him, it's idolatry, but it's not prosukomai. Okay, that word in and of itself, you can only do that for God. Come on, come on, guys. This is why we study so we can find these things out. I, I love, I love the word. I don't know about you. I love the Lord. Okay, all right. So listen, they were praying and singing hymns. And the prisoners, the other prisoners, the other broke down, crazy, lost, protesting, cursing, burning, you know, um, you know, down with the poly, all that kind of stuff. Crazy people are listening to the song Your Life Sings. And suddenly there was an earthquake, a shaking, so that the very foundations of the prison were shaken. Come on, people. That's what your praise does. Come on, that's what your praise does. That's what your praise does. You should write it in your notes. That's what my praise does. 
circle the word, write it in the margin of your Bible. <laughs> there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. That's what my praise does. My praise shatters the strongholds of the enemy. That's what my praise does. Come on, come on, guys, come on. If I would just get a song of praise in my heart, even when I don't feel like it, even if I have to moan and groan and just kind of whisper it to myself that something's going to begin to shift and shake. Look, and immediately, are you guys in the text with me? Listen, uh, immediately, all the doors, listen, people, now you know how many times I've read this and that's the first time I noticed. All the doors, come on, all the doors were open. Doors of sickness, doors of disease, doors of financial lack. Whatever the enemy has shut, whatever the enemy has locked up around you, when you begin to, to sing a song of praise at midnight, just when the devil thought you were ready to take your life and instead you flip the script and begin to begin to begin to praise God Lord I glorify you Lord I magnify you Jesus I bless you Lord I love you I love you Lord Lord I love you even with tears rolling down your face I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice come on when you begin to do listen all the doors, all the doors will open and everybody, every, everybody who was in bondage around them was loosed. Did you get that? <laughs> That's so profound. I'm not making it up. Look at it. It's in your Bible. And immediately all the doors were open and everybody, circle everybody, everybody's bonds were unfastened because they were listening. Listen, when you get set free, somebody else is going to get set free because they're listening to the song your life sings. When you get set free, your children will get set free. Your co-workers will get set free. If you begin to release the song of praise and adoration, somebody is going to get set free. When you get around the crazy people, come on, let's just be undercover. Come on, all this week, all this week, this is our assignment. Let's not avoid the crazy people or the people that we don't like. Let's instead lean in a little closer, as close as we can with the social distancing. But listen, these people were in other prison cells, but they could still hear. So anybody that's in earshot of your praise, <laughs> come on, they going to get set free, beloved. Are you listening to me? When the jailer woke up, and saw that all the prison doors were open. He drew his sword. I shouldn't laugh, but he was about to kill himself because he thought all the prisoners had escaped. Because listen, he was gonna be in some serious trouble, okay? But look at this. Paul cried out with a loud voice. Come on, man, don't, don't hurt yourself. We all still here. We all still here. And the jailer called for lights. And they rushed in and, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul in silence. Verse 30, then he brought them out and he was undone. He had had an encounter. Their bonds are free. You, you know, uh, all the prisoners, the prison doors are open. Their shackles have come off. Everybody is, is loosed while they're still in this, this place. But he said, Lord, Lord what, what, what must I do to be saved? Because certainly your God, your God has got to be God. Listen, the people that know your story, when they see what God does in and through you, they, they would have to testify, your God has got to be God. And they said, listen, just believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and that's the word sozo. I'm pretty sure, but I'll look it up. Uh, you will be saved. Yes, yeah, sozo in in the in the Greek. That word, that little four letter word, is so powerful. It's translated salvation, but 
when you open that word up out of the original language, it means to be made whole, spirit, soul, and body, healed, delivered, restored, renewed, set free. Come on, did you get that? So, so believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Why? Why your household? Do, do, come on, does your mind say, why does it say that? If I believe, what's this got to do with my household? Because the inmates are listening to the song your life sings. Write that down, somebody. The inmates are listening to the song. Uh, wait, let me let me write it down. The inmates. The inmates. That's your family. Come on, you know them people crazy. The inmates are listening. So when you get saved, beloved, and say, when you get sozo saved, healed, delivered, set free, restored, new mind, new, new thought process, new love, when you get saved, you and your household, because the inmates are listening, their doors will come open too. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their wounds. And he was, so look, look, did you catch that? He washed their wounds. Did you catch that? They were still wounded while they were serving and loving and singing and praising. They were still wounded, but they were, hallelujah, anyhow. Come on, guys. Oh, man, we're running out of time. Look at this. Look at this. He took them, he washed their wounds, and he was baptized. Him and everybody, everybody, everybody was baptized. Come on, God. Come on, guys. That's so good. Everybody, his whole house was baptized. And then what did they do? They had a barbecue. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought they was in the hood. He brought them up into his house and he set food before them. They ate. Eating, eating is a is a um uh a, 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 a way of, of expressing covenant. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed. <clears throat> the story goes on, and, and you know, that listen, listen, guys. Um People, everybody, that's, that's right, Kanisha, everybody. Listen, guys, that's powerful. My Aunt Mary said it was awesome. She's given the hallelujah. Come on, people. Your praise is powerful. Your praise is powerful. And people are listening to the song your life sings. Even if they look like they're not listening, they are listening. Even when you think you're being quiet, you are releasing something into the atmosphere. Let it be the power and the presence and the, the word of God. So, oh, I don't think I want to shift into this next topic. We're going to have to pick this up next week. Um. I want us to just kind of linger there. Um, he rejoiced with his entire household that he had believed in God. This is going to be a season of rejoicing, beloved. Listen, because <clears throat> we, you've been through, we've been through this year, but God, but God, regardless of what's coming, regardless of the difficulty, remember, you know, whatever, there was a song we used to sing back in the day when I was in my 20s, right before I went to seminary, I was a member of Apostle Charles O'Miles Church, the International Gospel Center. That was my pastor that I left there, went to say, he released me to go to seminar. He said, daughter, go and get qualified. He affirmed the call on my life. And the choir, we used to sing this song that said, whenever trials come my way, I'll lift my hands to the Lord and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow, 
Did you get that? I might have to Google that, see if I could find that old gospel song. Whenever trials come my way, I lift my hand to the Lord and say, hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow, I think is the name of the song. So God, listen, listen, guys, I am out of time. I'm never out of words, but I am out of time. And this is just good. Whispers, worship, and the end times. We're going to continue with this. Um, we'll pick it up again on next week. Um, again, if you're in my um, um, book club, keep reading because we should be done um, by the end of this week with our book whispers and we you know, plan to hang out after church with me. Let's have lunch. Let's talk about it. You've been listening to the Living Water live stream Bible study. This is Bernardine Wormley Daniels. It is my extreme pleasure and privilege and grace um, that's bestowed upon me from the Father to be able to be with you. If you want to sow into what we're doing, please, the information is there in the um, stream, paypal.me forward slash Soterios Ministries. Thank you, Gladys, so much for always posting that for me. Or you can cash out. It all goes to Soterios. It does not go in my pocket. It helps me to do the things that I do for you for free, okay? So you can go to Cash app is hash is on dollar sign, Dr. Bernie, S-M-I. And we are a 501c3. So whatever you give, you will get a tax receipt for income tax purposes at the end of the year. God bless you, beloved. Um, stay saved. And remember, your worship is your weapon and it'll work for you. I'll see you next time. Take care and God bless.